What is going to write today? We are diving into my top 10 worst WWE elites of 2024 so far. Now we're going to be diving into a lot of different figures today, going through my entire top 10, and I don't have anything on screen right here, so I do want to go ahead and dive into our top 10, and then we'll discuss everything about it, man. So with that being said, let's shut the hell up. We're diving into the 10 worst. We already did the 10 best. If you guys missed our list for our 10 best WWE elites of 2024 so far, definitely go check that video out after this one. I'd greatly appreciate it. Well, let's shut the hell up and get into number 10. Coming in at number 10, we have the Elite 109 Bailey. And really, man, I mean, WWE Elites have been so damn good this year when a figure like this has got to be on your top 10 because there's not a whole lot that's wrong with this figure individually. And I tried my best to try to find something else that could go here, but I really couldn't. And it's really not that bad of a figure. I think that really the thing that puts this figure on the list is going to be the same basic boots that we continue to get. And I like this figure a lot. And it did come in as the worst figure in Elite 109, but Elite 109 nine was a pretty damn stacked way for the most part man so I, I i hate putting this figure in the top 10 so i want to go ahead and preface that and it's hard to really find something that really you know stands out enough to put it into a top 10 but unfortunately this bailey just made the cut and so she comes in at the number 10 spot At number 9, we have an Amazon exclusive. It is going to be the WrestleMania 10 WWE Elite 2-pack Razor Ramon. This did come with Shawn Michaels. It was kind of a very random Amazon exclusive. I'm guessing that somebody over at Mattel is a big fan of this matchup in this moment. But uh, I think the execution of this isn't bad per se. But I mean, it's kind of a, it's like a Razor Ramon from the neck down for the most part. You know, it's just a repaint of a regular Razor. And then the new head sculpt, I just really wasn't feeling it that much. I, I don't really care for this head sculpt that much. The likeness is okay. I just think that it just has a weird, I, there's something about it. It's oversized. I think it's a little wide. And I don't know, it just didn't get the job done for me. I feel like Scott Hall is kind of on a bad uh, a bad streak right now, but I hope that his ringside exclusive ultimate will kind of break that streak. But this figure was not my favorite. I don't hate it necessarily, but it's certainly not one of the better figures of the year. It it, it cracked it. That's why it's number nine. It's not my worst, you know, it's not the worst of the worst, but it's definitely worth the honorable mention kind of here at number nine. Coming in at number 8, the only reason this figure is here, man, this Elite Series 108 Chelsea Green figure. I did switch the hands out for some, I think this is Charlotte hands or something. It has like the blue nail polish on it and it just kind of, I don't know, you could easily do like a hand on the hip pose, you know what I'm saying? So I thought that that worked pretty good for a fix up. But this figure is not very bad, I wouldn't say. I'd say for the neck down, it's damn good. I just think that they could have done so much better on the head sculpt, man. I think that, I don't know, they just didn't really capture Chelsea Green's likeness. I think that the facial expression is a little off and the hair is a little like I don't know the ombre style that they try sometimes I don't think that it quite works most of the time I know that it's difficult to achieve that I've seen them do it in the past it's not that they're incapable of achieving that look it's just really difficult I think for them and maybe their factories and things like this so that is something that I wanted to touch on but from the neck down this figure is damn good and I actually enjoy posing this figure around I like the boots they could have easily not given us this boot swivel and things like that but this figure is very fun to pose around her feet also get really loose but I don't know the head sculpt kind of put this figure on the list for me and I actually enjoy this figure I just think that hopefully her next go around I hope her head sculpts better Coming in at number 7, we have the SummerSlam Elite X-Pac figure. Not the worst figure of all time, like I stated. I feel like the top 5 is really where I get into the weeds of it, where I don't necessarily like the figures. But I don't know, this just isn't my favorite, man. And also, kind of a boring release. I think that it, uh, first of all, this wasn't the gear that I wanted. That's not the biggest deal ever, but it's my least favorite gear that they could have chosen. And I think that the head sculpt still looks like my science teacher. And it also looks like Freddie Benson's mom. And that's just the way it is, my man. So if you Google it, look it up. It looks like my science teacher. You're not going to be able to find my science teacher. But you could find Freddie Benson's mom. You look up Freddie Benson's mom. Just Google Freddie Benson mom. This is what this looks like with a beard attached to it. And so I think that, I don't know, man. It was also very lifeless. Like all we got was a damn, just some sunglasses. Like no bandana, repeat head sculpt. And I know it's supposed to be a repaint of a previous figure, but uh, it was pretty bummy to get all those accessories on one figure. You know, the previous version of this Elite, you know, it was repainted, but it's like the previous version of this. And then to, you know, not have it just be bare bones is very unfortunate. So I have this SummerSlam X-Pac. 
At number six, we have a number, another SummerSlam figure. It's going to be the Elite SummerSlam 2024 Undertaker, man. And this one, I just don't like the head sculpts, man. I don't like the head sculpts. I know they're, they're a moment in time. Okay, I understand the expression. But Mattel has been in their goofy face sculpt era for a little bit now. I'd say for probably two years now, they've been on this goofy head sculpt run. And I just don't really care for them, man. I, I could have went throughout my lifetime without getting this. And I don't know. I just don't like it. Now, I will say, I think from the neck down, it's pretty damn good. I like that it's just a... You know, it's just a plain attire Undertaker that you could fix up a whole lot of different ways. But at the same time, I think that it's a very boring release. I mean, and this guy really didn't get any accessories either. You got an interchangeable head sculpt, a hat, a hat with no coat or anything. And then from the neck down, it's just a plain Undertaker. And I really wish they would upgrade this torso. I think that this torso could be much bigger for Undertaker. Talked about it with Kane all the time. I think that's another thing. I think that they could make him bigger. I think the Kane shirtless torso is perfect, but this one right here is too skinny. I think that any Kane that's actually wearing a singlet is too skinny or small, so I think that would be really nice to see. I think you should just take the take the normal Kane Elite torso that's shirtless and take that as the base and then just sculpt a singlet over it, and it would really capture that, you know, that likeness of his build better. But, yeah, this figure just, I don't like it, man. I don't like these expressive, goofy head sculpts, so I put Undertaker here at number six. So we are cracking into the top five, and I have the Elite 107 Cora Jade figure, man. I think the thing about the Cora Jade comes down to, I think that in between the shins and the neck, it's pretty damn good. I like the attire. I like the tattoos. She is a toyetic person. I like the hat. I think that the head sculpt, which is probably, you could argue, is probably the most important part of the figure, head sculpt, and then these basic boots, man. They gotta retire this damn Bailey boot mold, man. It's just, it's old news. It needs to go. I think that they, they have started to sculpt out, you know, some new boots into the women's, you know, elite figures and things like that. However, I think that the head sculpt really doesn't look like Core J to me. She kind of she kind of looks a bit derpy, and we kind of, the, the end of last year into the beginning of this year, we kind of gotten more derpy head sculpts, and I would like to see us return to form with these women's head sculpts and, you know, get their likeness and capture, you know, their, their likeness better in these figures. But I think that the women's figures are the best they've ever been. But I think we got to nail these head sculpts, and I just don't think this quite captures it. And so these weird boots and then the head sculpt are what kind of dock this figure. I know a lot of people that love this figure. I like this figure. I don't think it's bad necessarily. I don't just despise this figure for, you know, for any reason. However, the head sculpt just really lacks, man. Head sculpts, and head sculpts matter so much. So I did want to put Cora Jade here on my list. Coming in at number four, I don't even own the figure that I'm putting here at number four because this figure is, it, the, the figure that I would put is a repaint of this. The Monday Night Wars Red Attire Triple H figure. That is such a boring release for this wave. And I really, I am going to review Monday Night War Elite Series 2 with the full entire wave there when I find those. But that wave sucks, man. I'm going to be honest. That wave is not good. That's not a good wave. It, it's I'm not looking forward to it, man. I really think that it is lackluster in a lot of ways. And this this is one of those reasons. It's it, You just take the green off this figure and make it red, and that is the figure. You get, like, no accessories really whatsoever. Just a boring, boring, boring release. And that is why he's here on the top ten. Coming in at number three, we have the Legends 22 Muhammad Ali figure. And really, this comes down to just a few different things here, man. I think that, you know, anytime you get an Ultimate Edition of a figure and then you, you know, that, that comes first. If the Elite comes first and then you get the Ultimate later, that's one thing. But to get an Ultimate Edition of a guy and then to blink and they're doing the Elite version of that same guy and it's basically the exact same thing, but worse, then, I mean, what are we doing, man? I just think it's such a plain release. And I don't, again, I don't hate this figure, but in terms terms of just releases, this is just a lame and boring release for me. And so I do have Muhammad Ali coming here in here at number three. Like, I can't sit here and dissect this figure and say it sucks because for the most part, I mean, it's not bad. I just have to call out a release and this release has been called out. He is the number three worst so far. And will they, will these remain? You know, at the end of the year, will we do a top 10 worst figures again or something like that? Maybe. Or we may just do a massive 20 minute video discussing all the worst of 2024. But that Muhammad Ali is coming in at number three. At number two, we have Honeycomb Mouth himself. We have Elite 108 Brock Lesnar, man. 
This figure right here just is just such a just such a bad release, man. Just not good, man. Not good at the slightest. Honeycomb mouth even comes equipped with his own honeycomb cereal, which I will say, if he came with a honeycomb cereal, it would be one of the best figures. I would think that would be brilliant, but yeah, man, I just don't. I don't like any of the accessories here. I don't think the hat fits that well on the on the head here, kind of loose there. But that's not even the main point. I just think you know we've gotten so. If you look at it, like the last couple of years, like two and a half years, we've gotten so many Lesners in this exact look, and this one didn't really move the needle whatsoever. There was nothing new really about it besides this goofy head sculpt that the mouth's way too big, and it's so goofy that it's way too big. And so I had to call it out, man. Honeycomb Mouth 108 Brock Lesnar comes in at the number two spot for me as the worst figure of 2024 so far. The worst WWE elite, I should say. And for my number one worst WWE elite of 2024 so far, we are going with none other than the Monday Night Wars Scott Hall figure. This figure right here, man. I mean, Jesus Christ. They did not get a lot right on this. They did not get a lot right on this, man. I don't think that... First of all, the vest is completely flat. It has no dry brushing detail, so it completely mismatches on the pants. He's way too short. Like, he is so tight. He is shorter than this X-Pac figure back here, right here. So, there is that. The head sculpts are not good. They look like an Elite from 2018, 2017. Hell, they may even look like an Elite from 2015 at this juncture. I just do not... Uh, it's not good, man. It's not good. It lacks in so many ways. Also, the legs are stiff as anything man like and i know that doesn't that doesn't necessarily play into the fact that that's just another candle on the cake you know what i mean so this one is easily easily for me the worst wwe elite of 2024 it lacks in so many damn ways that it's not even funny and it could have been so much better man but unfortunately that is not the case that we have right here so that scott hall figure is just abysmal and we have to call it out it is it is the number one worst wwe elite of 2024 i think a lot of people would probably have this as their number one but i could be wrong I would love to know down in the comment section below if you guys are in agreement with this take and what you guys think of my entire top 10. I always love doing worst list. I feel like worst lists do better than best list. People like to, I don't know, not necessarily thrive in the negative, but they like to hear the negative takes like, oh, I like that figure. Why is that on there? Or, you know, that people, I don't know. People just like to work. Like any negative thing is always going to outweigh a positive thing. Unfortunately, it's kind of the world we live in. So I don't know. I would love to know down in the comment section below if you guys, how you guys feel about my top 10. What is your top 10? What do you think is the worst elite? Maybe it's not here. If you guys hate, you know, some certain figures from this year. I'd love to know what you think of it down in the comment section below, man. But that is pretty much going to wrap up my top 10 WWE Elites of 2024 so far on the worst side of things. And again, we did do our best side of things. So if you guys missed our best WWE Elites of 2024 so far, definitely go check that video out. I would greatly appreciate it. There should be a tag at the very end of the video. But I greatly appreciate you guys so much. Before we get out of here, huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all those fellas over there. You guys are absolutely goaded. And I appreciate every single one of you guys so very much. So Thank you guys so very much for watching. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you later.